Hey everyone, it's Nick with RadView Detection. We're going to try to do a short video on how to do gamma spectroscopy with your RadView MK1 or MK2. First thing we need to do is calibrate the detector. So here I have Europium 152. You could also use radium or cesium, a whole bunch of different elements. Um, the more peaks, the better. Uh, so like Europium has a lot of peaks, radium will also have a lot of peaks. Uh, so once you find an isotope that has a bunch of peaks to calibrate from, uh, you want to head over to our website. Uh, from here we can download our Arduino code. So we're going to want to go to setup and then find our spectroscopy video. So download Arduino code. You can see here it's named RadView Gamma Spectrum. You can go ahead and click on that and it'll open up here. I'm going to click OK. Uh, from there it enters the code uh, real quick. There's a time setting on the code. Um, so this is time in seconds to sample every, for instance, 240 seconds, it'll spit out a gamma spectrum. So I'm going to set this to, let's say, two minutes would be 120 seconds, and we'll do that. Then I just click upload, and real quick, I almost forgot, make sure your board is correct. So we have an Arduino Uno, and be under Arduino uh, AVR boards, and then we also have the port is correct, so COM4 Uno. And then next, you just want to make sure the detector is close to your source. Um, if your source is really hot, I'd recommend backing the detector off a bit. Um, but it'll work just fine for this europium. Next up, we just want to go to tools and then serial monitor, and we will wait for our gamma spectrum to get printed out. So once the serial monitor prints out our gamma spectrum, we're going to press control A and control C. So control A highlights everything, control C copies it. We can head over to, for instance, our download folder and right click on it and hit new, and then we'll go text document. We'll name it um, known spectrum. We can open that up and we'll open it with notepad and then we're going to press control V to paste our spectrum in there and if you see a bunch of zeros that's actually just the high end of the scale you can actually see all the numbers here and then we're going to press control S or you can go file and save once that's done we need to download interspec so I'll leave a link in the description but you can head over to interspec's github page uh, a little bit further down you see a web view 2 and our interspec web view 2 Go ahead and open that up and click on it and it will download. Once it's done downloading, you'll see a little zipper on it. We need to unzip it. So you can right click it and hit extract all and then just extract. And that'll take a minute. And while you're waiting for everything, if you can move your radioactive sources further away from you, that's a good idea. Time distance and shielding are your friends. So once that's open, we want to head over to Interspec, open that up, and then we can see the program right here. I recommend adding this to your taskbar. So if you right click on it and hit pin to taskbar, it'll be right down here at the bottom of your screen so you can easily open it in the future. We just double click on that. So once Interspec opens, we want to go, um, we can actually head over to our downloads folder right here, and we can drag and drop our spectrum in. And we want to go foreground. There's also, uh, you can't see it because it's behind background and then a secondary. So we're going to go foreground, and I'll drop that in. So once we get a spectrum, uh, we know this is Europium-152. Uh, and so like if you had a radium clock, it'd be radium-226. It would be a whole bunch of different things. Um, the more peaks, the better for calibration, though. And so you can see now it's not calibrated. So this peak right here is saying it's at 1800 keV. It should really be around 1400 keV. So we need to calibrate. So what I'd recommend doing for calibration is if you know what your isotope is, head over to Reference Photo Peaks. And we can search for EU-152 for Europium-152. You could do Radium-226. So if we zoom out here, we can see a whole bunch of lines. And these lines are telling us where our peaks should be. So again, it's not calibrated right now, so they're clearly not there. So for instance, this really big peak out here needs to actually be over here. And so what we can do is double click on it, and it highlights it. And then we can right click and go to Peak Editor, and we can see that it is selected at the wrong value. So it should be at 1408, and we can see that right over there. And so I'm gonna go through each one and make sure they're in the correct areas. Another quick tip, if you're looking for um, spectrums, you can also just Google your isotope and then uh, gamma spectrum at the end of it and kind of see examples so it'll help you line up your spectrum. Once you start getting close, you can hit fit coefficients. 
So you can see that one is correct. And I'm gonna make sure this one's correct at 344. Yep. And so we can hit fit again, get a better fit. Uh, then we can do some peaks out here. So I didn't let the spectrum go super long, so the peaks are a little rough, but we're just double clicking to highlight a peak. And we wanna hit fit again. Now you can see we're honing in. So once you get all your peaks selected, you can see the ones down here selected and the ones further down our scale are selected. We wanna download the calibration profile for easy use. You can say rad view um, calibration profile, calp. You can hit save. So now we're gonna take a spectrum of an unknown source and see if we can use our calibration profile to figure out what that source is. So we're gonna go ahead and minimize interspec for now. Head back over to Arduino so we can minimize these other tabs. And what we wanna do is take our unknown source So here I have a disk source, and we can set our sensor on top of that. And then we can close the serial monitor and reopen it to take a new spectrum. So after two minutes here, because that's our time set, we can hit Control-A, Control-C, and we'll head over to our Downloads folder, and we can make a new text document to paste this in, and we're gonna say unknown source. Go ahead and open that up and notepad, paste our spectrum here and then hit file and save. So from there we can head back over to interspec and let's say we had a new session further down the line. So we're going to clear our session. So now we can go to file, open file, and then we can add our unknown source here. So here you can see a spectrum and it's uncalibrated currently because we started a new project. Luckily, we have our calibration profile. So if we head back over to our downloads, we can see our rad view calibration profile. We can click and drag that onto our spectrum. When we do that, it'll say it looks like that file has a, a calibration and we're gonna hit yes, we wanna use it. So now it's got us calibrated and so we can double click our peaks. So there's some peaks down here too, I think, but those are some big ones. And then we're gonna go to new glide search. So from here, we can click on the peak, it'll highlight it. And then we can go ahead and click plus and add another one and see if anything comes up. So sweet. So the first thing that comes up is sodium 22 I would click on that and verify. So you can see when I click on it, it actually adds in the gamma rays. You can see there's a big one there. There's a big one there. And so we know that this is um, sodium 22 based on where those peaks are located. If we click on a different isotope, for instance, you can see there's peaks here that should be there, but they're not there. We don't have any peaks down here. Um, and you can see even with the sodium peak, we're off the mark if we did use this element. So we can head back to sodium. You can see it's pretty bang on. So yeah, that's how you do more advanced gamma spectroscopy with your rad view. To recap, you wanna calibrate your detector with a known source that has many peaks. Radium is a good one. Europium also works if you're gonna be doing this frequently. You wanna export that calibration profile after you calibrate it. Then you can take any gamma spectrum, put it into a notepad file, open it up, and then drop your calibration profile on top, and then your channels will be in the correct energy levels. All right, well, I forgot to do an outro, so here we go. I really hope everyone's enjoying the videos. If there's any subjects you'd like me to cover, um, I've been thinking about doing a series maybe on like how to choose a scintillation crystal and what to pick. Um, I've also been thinking about doing like a full-blown how to make your own gamma spectrometer from the ground up. If you guys are interested in that, just let me know. Leave a comment. If you guys do want to reserve a detector, head over to our website. We're hoping for a late October, early November launch. Like I said earlier, though, if you guys have any other questions, just shoot us an email. Um, I'm on Discord all the time. If you guys want to go over to one of the radiation subs, you can also message me on Reddit. That works, too. Oh, also, I almost forgot. I'm also going to be doing a video series, or like a, a devlog, on a massive scintillation crystal I have. It's a 3-inch by 3-inch by 12-inch sodium iodide crystal. Uh, it should be really sensitive, and I'm going to cover like the whole process of how I get it to work, how its sensitivity stacks up, and what you can use it for. If you guys have anything you'd like to see me do with that massive crystal, just let me know in the comments.
This has been Radview Nick. I'll catch you guys in the next one.